So before I dive into hide tanning, I want to just demonstrate a very important piece of the puzzle, which is, of course, the skinning of the animal. You can't tan the hide until it's off of the animal. And unfortunately, so many people ruin hides with poor skinning. And here is an example, I've scraped a little bit of it, but of a beautiful hide, right? Totally intact from the hair side and a good sized hide, a nice thickness and would have been a beautiful hide to tan. But while it only looked like it had one big hole here from the hair side, inside you can see there are a bunch of smaller holes and the whole thing is just covered in score marks. Score marks are what we call it when you slice part way through the hide. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring this up closer so you get a good look at the carnage that is this once lovely hide. So check it out up here. The neck is just covered in slices that go part way through. So some folks might look at this and say, oh, no problem. A lot of these don't go all the way through, but the problem is when you go to scrape it, usually these score marks are going to open into holes and this height is going to end up like Swiss cheese. So a total waste of a once beautiful hide. I attribute a lot of wonderful hides that get cut to shreds to skinning knives. So the truth is you don't really need a big long bladed curved skinning knife to skin an animal. In fact, those usually end up doing a much worse job. So all you really need is a nice small, let's hold that where you can see it against the bushes, a nice small, very sharp knife. And the thing to do is do an initial cut just behind the ears, around the neck and down to the chin, and then right down the midline of the animal. And this is important because if you go off of the midline, you're gonna have a wonky shaped hide, which is much less useful. And then out the inside of each limb to the hooves or paw, depending on the animal, and then around the foot. And then sometimes you need to do a little bit of knife work to free it up around the sternum, because the skin kind of sticks there, and around the start of the neck. But as soon as you have that peeled away to where you can get hold of it, then set your knife down. You don't need it anymore. The best way to skin is one, if your animal is hanging, then using your body weight to pull it down off of the animal, or you can get in there with your fist, hold the hide and push in with your fist or with your knuckles or just with your thumb and you peel the hide off. This is key. Hunters, please do a good job skinning the hide. The truth is that a better skinned animal doesn't just yield a better hide, but it yields a lot more meat. The issue with these big curved skinning knives is they get in there and they're taking really broad slices and you can't necessarily see where they're getting with those big long curved blades. And it's really difficult visually to see where the membrane on top of the muzzle stops and the skin starts because they're the same color. So, and the texture isn't that different. So unless you really know what you're doing, and a lot of people think what they're do they know what they're doing because they've skinned so many animals, but if you haven't tanned the hides, then often you don't know if you're actually damaging it. So yeah, it's so easy to slice into the hide or the meat. And then you have this sliced up meat that's clinging to your hide and just gets gross and has to be fleshed off. Waste of meat and waste of hide. So I like to start up by the neck so that I can get down behind the twitch muscle. So deer have this very fine, thin layer of muscle all along from their neck down to their back to about the rumps. And we call it the twitch muscle because it's what's make the skin kind of shiver, you know, when like a biting fly gets on an animal and their skin kind of does that shiver. That's because of this twitch muscle. So it's very fine and it's really easy to peel the skin off and have that twitch muscle stay on the skin. And what you want is to leave it on the carcass. So if you very carefully go right around the shoulder blades and get that muscle unattached to the skin and left on the carcass, then you can peel the whole hide off with your body weight and then it doesn't require any fleshing at all. You get a totally clean hide and a really clean animal with that twitch muscle on intact. And then that will dry and it will form a covering over your animal so that you can hang it and flies and yellow jackets can't get in there. It dries on and forms like an impenetrable skin that protects your meat. So better for everything. 
So in order to scrape the hide, we need to have something that's gonna break down the glues between the grain, that shiny outside layer of the hide, and the dermis, which is the middle of the hide, which is what we're really after for our finished product. So the grain is held on there pretty tight, and unless we do something to get it a little bit looser, it's gonna be near impossible to scrape off using the wet scrape method. So you can either soak your hide in water, in which case you're letting the bacteria do some of that work for you, or you can soak in an alkaline solution. So alkalines are, alkaline solutions are solutions with a high pH. So it's the opposite of acid. And that looks like using either wood ash or hydrated lime or potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide, which is lye. So all of those things have the action of breaking down those glues a little bit, and then the alkaline solutions also cause the hide to plump a bit, which can make it easier to see the grain. So my preference, if I have the proper timing, is to soak in a water bath and let the bacteria do the work for me. The issue with that, though, is if you if you have to store the hide longer than it ought to be, the rot can go too far and it can get very stinky and it can also potentially break down your hide through the rot process. So if I'm gonna be teaching and I have to have the hides ready and they might be scraped for a while or you know I need to get them prepped a little bit early and have them hold and not go too far, then I'm gonna be using the bucking method which is what we call soaking something in an alkaline solution. So the water soaked hides are looking good, super floppy and pliable, and I'm not able to get the hair out super easily, but it is slipping. So the hair slipping out of the follicle when one pulls on it, like this, that is the indicator that we use to tell when the hide is ready to scrape. So these hides were dried for a long time as opposed to wet salted where they retain their moisture and when they dry then the hair gets stuck on there a little bit more because the follicle shrinks around it. So these aren't going to slip as well as a hide that was never dried out. So I'm going to line up the hide so that the spine of the animal is running right down the middle of my beam. And my beam here is a piece of PVC pipe on top of half of a log. So you can also just use a log. The only issue is if you leave it out in the weather all the time, then it's gonna get cracks with the freeze-thaw, freeze-thaw cycle, or just from soaking up with water and then drying. So PVC is a nice modern solution to have a smooth surface beam, but I also really like scraping on just wood. So again, I'm gonna line my hide up so it's neck up at the top of the beam and the tail, as you can see here, maybe you can't see here because you can't see all of me. All right, well, the tail is facing down. And then I'm gonna be scraping straight down the top of my beam. You want to really avoid working off to the side like this because it's easy to accidentally cut your hide. So I'm using a scraper that's made from a planer blade from a planing mill and it's very dull. So I've dulled the heck out of this because I'm pushing the grain off of the hide. I'm not cutting or slicing the grain off. If it was sharp enough to slice, it would just cut right through the hide and then I'd be turning my hide into ribbons. So I want it dull enough that I can press really good right across it without any risk of cutting my fingers and then it's not gonna risk cutting the hide. So another very important technique is scraping very thoroughly the first time because if you haven't then you're going to be missing little bits of grain and it's so much more time and energy to go over hide three times because you weren't careful and methodical the first time. So the way I make sure I'm doing that is I'm using short choppy strokes. So two or three inches per stroke. And then I'm working back and forth as I go so that every stroke is overlapping the stroke to the side of it on the sides and then also top to bottom. So that means I'm actually going ever over every bit of hide several times, making sure that I've thoroughly removed all of the grain. So 
So if you can see, right here are some areas where I missed the grain. So some of this is full grain with the shiny part intact, and some of it is what we call subsurface grain, which is some layers of the grain, even though it's not the full thickness. So that was from doing poor strokes. So let's clean that up. Now it's time to scrape the back side, which is the membrane side. So the membrane is a thin layer that's between the muscles and the skin itself. Now this is a really different process than the grain, even though it looks the same, because the membrane isn't a real distinct layer like the grain is. And if you leave a little bit, it's not a big deal. So you don't have to be nearly as thorough with it, and it doesn't take as much pressure to remove it. And also it's a lot easier to tell visually when you've got it all off than the grain. So in that way, it's a lot easier. It's kind of like the reward for having finished the scraping. Membraning is like a piece of cake after you've finished graining the whole thing. So if you can tell, there's a real distinct difference visually in where I've already scraped and where I haven't. The membrane, it's a lot more loose and kind of grippy than the grain side. So usually a lot of color tends to stick to it and it'll just pick up kind of dirt and debris. And that's part of why it's so easy to tell visually when you've gotten it all. Okay, so this hide is membraned and ready to go. So now it's a really good dryness to go into the dressing. So the membraning process kind of squeegees out the hide and gets it drier. So it's pretty good. I'm actually gonna let it dry out a little bit more so that it's really around the, con the consistency of a, a wrung out sponge so that it's going to absorb the dressing really well. So. Graining complete, membraning on the back side, the flesh side complete, and now getting the dressing prepared.